This video is a virtual anatomy lecture series directed by Dr. Strategy using an anatomic table. The manipulation and the annotation was done by Dr. Mai Bai Chuong. The English script was monitored and recorded by Ms. Soyeon Kim, the PhD candidate. You can learn human anatomy easily with SNUSD Knowledge Share Initiative. Let's continue with the lateral view of the skull. There are important anatomic structures here that we should know. First is the temporal line. It lines on each side of the skull that begins as a single ridge on the temporal bone, runs upward and backward from the zygomatic process, and divides into superior and inferior lines. The superior temporal line is attached to the temporal fascia, while the inferior temporal line is where the temporal muscle attaches. Second is the temporal fossa. Temporal fossa is a depression on the temporal region, and it is one of the largest landmarks on the skull, bounded by the temporal lines and terminating below the level of the zygomatic arch. The contents of this fossa are temporal muscle, anterior and posterior deep temporal artery and vein, superficial temporal artery, and zygomaticotemporal nerve. Next is the external acoustic meatus, also called external auditory canal or external auditory meatus. It is a passageway that leads from the outside of the head to the tympanic membrane or eardrum membrane of each ear. Next is the styloid process. The styloid process is a cylindrical, slender, needle-like projection of varying lengths averaging from 2 to 3 centimeters. It projects from the inferior part of the petrous temporal bone and attaches to the stylohyoid ligament and the stylohyoid, stylopharyngeus, and styloglossus muscles. This is the mastoid process. The mastoid process of temporal bone is a smooth pyramidal or cone-shaped bone projection located posterior and inferior to the ear canal lateral to the styloid process. The mastoid process serves for the attachment of sternocleidomastoid muscle, posterior belly of digastric muscle, splenius capitis, longissimus capitis. This is the supramiatal triangle, also called the McEwen triangle or mastoid fossa. It is a surgical landmark on the surface of the temporal bone, just superior to the external acoustic meatus used to locate the level of the mastoid antrum. Next is the mandibular fossa. Mandibular fossa, also called glenoid fossa, is an oval depression behind the anterior root of the zygomatic process of the temporal bone for the reception of the condyle of the mandible. This is the articular tubercle. Articular tubercle is a rounded eminence of the anterior root of the posterior end of the outer surface of the squama temporalis. It forms the front boundary of the mandibular fossa and in fresh state is covered with cartilage. This is the articular eminence. It is a part of the temporal bone on which the condylar process slides during mandibular movements. In some textbooks, the articular eminence is referred to as the same structures with the articular tubercle, but strictly speaking, the eminence is located more medially than the tubercle and forms the anterior limit of mandibular fossa. This is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. The zygomatic process is a long arched process projecting from the lower of the squamous part of the temporal bone. It arises as two roots, anterior and posterior roots. 
The upper border of the arch gives attachment to the temporal fascia. The lower border and medial surface gives origin to the masseter muscle. Here is the zygomatic arch. The zygomatic arch is formed by the union of the temporal process of the zygomatic bone and the zygomatic process of the temporal bone at the zygomatico-temporal suture. The tendon of the temporal muscle passes medial to the arch to gain insertion into the coronoid process of the mandible. Here is the postglenoid process. The postglenoid process is the small process of the temporal bone separating the mandibular fossa from the external acoustic meatus. There are two important fossae in this area. They are the infratemporal fossa and the pterygopalatine fossa. We will talk about the infratemporal fossa first. Some parts of the zygomatic bone are removed to view the fossa more easily. The infratemporal fossa here can be said as an irregularly shaped cavity located deep within the masseter muscle and zygomatic arch. The boundaries of this complex structure can be identified roughly as follows. First, superiorly by the infratemporal crest of greater wing of sphenoid bone, and the surface of the temporal squama here. The roof provides an important passage for the neurovascular structures transmitted through the foramen ovale and spinosome. Anteriorly by the infratemporal surface of maxilla, and the ridge which descends from the zygomatic process. Medially by the lateral pterygoid plate of sphenoid, laterally by the ramus of mandible, the anatomical structures that pass through the infratemporal fossa are temporal muscle, medial pterygoid muscle, lateral pterygoid muscle, maxillary artery and vein, maxillary nerve, pterygoid venous plexus, corda tympani, optic ganglion, sphenomandibular ligament. There are five foramina or fissures that open into infratemporal fossa. Foramen ovale is located in the posterior part of the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. It transmits the mandibular nerve, the second branch of the trigeminal nerve. Next, the foramen spinosum is a small circular foramen present posterolateral to the foramen ovale in the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. It transmits the middle meningeal artery and vein and the meningeal branch of the mandibular nerve. Next, let's move on to the alveolar foramina. These foramina refer to several apertures to alveolar canal located on the outer surface of the maxillary tuberosity, through which nerves and vessels pass to reach the upper molars. Next, the inferior orbital fissure lies on the floor of orbit inferior to the superior orbital fissure. It transmits inferior ophthalmic vein, pterygoid venous plexus, the infraorbital nerve and vessels, the zygomatic branch of the maxillary nerve, and the ascending branch of the orbital periosteum from the pterygopalatine ganglion. Here is the pterygomaxillary fissure. It is vertical and descends at right angles from the medial end of the inferior orbital fissure. It connects the infratemporal fossa with the pterygopalatine fossa, 
and transmits the terminal part of the internal maxillary artery. Let's move on to the pterygopalatine fossa. Pterygopalatine fossa is located around here. The pterygopalatine fossa is a cone of funnel-shaped paired depression deep within the infratemporal fossa and posterior to the maxilla on each side of the skull, located between the pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone and the maxillary tuber tuberosity close to the apex of the orbit. The borders of the fossa are formed by the palatine maxilla and sphenoid bones, anteriorly by the superomedial part of the infratemporal surface of the maxilla, posteriorly by the root of the pterygoid process of the greater wing of the sphenoid bone, and the pyramidal process of palatine bone which is here medially by the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone and dark blue here, laterally by the pterygomaxillary fissure as I mentioned. Let's move on to the mandible. Another important part in the lateral view of the skull is the mandible. This is the mandible and there are the lower teeth on the mandibular body like this. The angle of the mandible or gonial angle is located at the posterior border at the junction of the lower border of the ramus of the mandible. Ramus on the left and the right of the mandible. The condylar process or condyloid process is the process on the human mandible that ends in a condyle. The mandibular notch is a curved depression on the upper border of the lower jaw between the coronoid process and the condyloid process. It allows the passage of the masseteric nerve, artery, and vein. Next. This is the head. And this is the neck of the condyle. The masseteric tuberosity is a rough area for the attachment of the masseter on the external surface of angle of mandible. This is the mental tubercle. And this is the oblique line. It marks the attachments of the depressor labi inferioris, depressor angularis, and parts of the platysma muscles. Next, let's talk about the sutures found in the lateral view of the skull. The first one is the frontozygomatic suture. The second one is the zygomaticotemporal suture. The third one is the sphenozygomatic suture. The fourth one is the sphenofrontal suture. The sphenoparietal suture is here. The sixth is the sphenosquamous suture. Here is the squamous suture. This is the parietomastoid suture. The occipitomastoid suture is here. This is the coronal suture. Now we will cover the important anatomic landmarks found in the lateral view of the skull. The first one is the orbital, which is the lowermost point on the lower margin of the orbit, located instrumentally on the skull or by palpation on the head. The second one is the frontotemporal, which is a craniometric point located at the most anterior point of the temporal line on the frontal bone. The next one is gonion. It is located at the lowest posterior and lateral point on the angle. The next one is the zygion, which is the most lateral point of the zygomatic arch.
The next one is the uterion. It is the region where the frontal, parietal, temporal, and sphenoid bones join together. The porion is located at the highest and most external point of the external acoustic meatus. The next one is auricular. In cephalometrics, it is the point of intersection of the external dorsal contour of the mandibular condyle and the temporal bone. The next one is the mastodial, the lowest point on the contour of the mastoid process. The next one is the asterion. It is formed at the junction of the occipital bone, the temporal bone, and the parietal bone. This is the inion. It corresponds to the tip of the external occipital protuberance. This is the opisthocranian. It corresponds to the most posterior point of the occipital bone. Phragma is the craniometric point located at the junction of the coronal and the sagittal sutures. Mentum corresponds to the lower point of the mental tuberosity. Pogonian corresponds to the frontmost point of the mental tuberosity. Nathian is between the Pogonian and Menton. This is the end of the lecture on the lateral view of the skull. Thanks for listening.